Good day, everyone. I am Mary Gretchen Chavez from the University of the Philippines, Cebu, and I thank the organizers for giving me the chance to present this paper entitled The Community of Inquiry Framework, Evaluating a Graduate Course in Remote Teaching, the Case of the Philippine State University. Our agenda are as follows. And as a background, the year, school year 2020-2021 was unprecedented. We all witnessed the abrupt transition to remote teaching and learning. And this includes the University of the Philippines where I teach. So we underwent, as faculty members, university-sponsored remote teaching and learning, pedagogy and technology upskilling seminars. One of the courses that I had to prepare my course pack and course design was an MBA management research course. I had to bear in mind the three forms of distance education interaction according to Moore and Kersley, and this would include student to student interaction, student to content interaction, and student to teacher interaction. So in the preparation of the course design and instructional strategies, I had a combination of lecture discussions, which were carried out the 12 week sessions, three hours per session. And then we also had a periodic assignments where these were made available online and were accessed from and submitted or turned in by the students through the learning management system. And in the learning management system, we also had uploaded and had access to lecture materials, instructor curated supplementary learning videos, as well as reading materials. The periodic guided assignments were core or central in the activity of the course. This is organized as a progression or completion of the parts of the course requirement. And the course requirement is the management research proposal. The periodic guided assignments were actually templates with instructive guide questions. And this would include the assignment overview, the objectives, then the detailed explanation and instructions, the dates of submission, and the rubrics. And so immediately after, I tried my best to come up with the feedback and reviews of the students, which I returned also under LMS. And of course, we had consultation sessions. And finally, we had redundancy in communication where we communicated not only through the learning management system, but also through email, phone calls, or even SMS. And so in this end, I wanted to evaluate how effective the course design as well as the instructional strategies that were implemented. And so the research problem, therefore, is to find out the applicability of FIOC's 2020 work on instructional strategies summary as basis for evaluating the MBA management research course in terms of the course design and instructional strategies. Then again, FIOC's 2020 instructional strategies were to be mapped, were mapped out along the community of inquiry presences of social teaching and cognitive presences. And so therefore the objectives of the studies to investigate the applicability of FIOC's 2020 summary of instructional activities as basis for evaluation of the course design as well as the instructional strategies of the MBA research course. For the significance of the study, this addresses the lack of studies that evaluate a graduate management research, and rightly so, because of the very nature of us doing an emergency remote teaching and learning mode. There are no studies that utilize the community of inquiry presences using the classification of instructional strategies identified by FIOC in 2020. And therefore, the results of the studies are envisioned to inform graduate education practitioners when designing their courses appropriately, as well as when implementing effective instructional strategies. There are, however, scope and limitations, one, one of which is the limited generalizability of the, re the results, because this is a case study, which is that of my own experience in the room. However, because of the dearth of studies and because of the methodology introduced, this will provide options for faculty of graduate program to evaluate courses and also when they would want to design their own courses as well as instructional strategies. The other one is space constraints. Um, we only have 
uh, we will only be presenting one open-ended question to demonstrate how the mapping out of FIOC's 2020 instructional activities helped in the evaluation of the course. So for our frameworks, we begin with the community of inquiry. Community of inquiry is one of the popularly utilized frameworks to measure meaningful engagement in online and computer-mediated teaching and learning environment, according to Castellanos Reyes, that were done, as well as Lowenthal and Dunlop. And this is how the community of inquiry is illustrated. According to Garrison, Anderson, and Archer in their seminal work on the community of inquiry, social presence is the projection of oneself as a real person in an online environment. Garrison in 2009 defined social presence as the ability of the participants to identify with the community, to communicate purposely in a purposefully rather in a trusting environment and also to develop interpersonal relationships by way of projecting their individual personalities. Cognitive presence, on the other hand, is the higher order thinking process. It's the extent to which the participants in any particular configuration of a community of inquiry are able to construct meaning through sustained communication. And finally, teaching presence is the facilitator's role in promoting the social presence as well as the cognitive presence to achieve the target learner's outcomes. It is the design, facilitation, and the direction of the cognitive as well as the social processes for the purpose of realizing personally meaningful and educationally worthwhile learning outcomes. And so FIU identified and classified various instructional strategies for online courses and structured this along the community of inquiry presences of social teaching and cognitive presences. But the first category is that he utilized the Chickering and Gumson seven principles of good practice in undergraduate education. So Fio then reviewed empirical peer-reviewed recent studies and investigated effective online instructional strategies. And he then classified this according to the seven principles for the online environment. And at the same time, each of these principles have the C OI or the community of inquiry presences. According to Pio, this should guide practitioners on the instructional activities that best align with the community of inquiry framework, as well as the seven principles for best practices for the online environment. And so if you look intently at the FIOC's instructional activities work, you will see here the list of all of the instructional activities coming from a number of sources. And so the methodology of the study is ex post facto qualitative, descriptive, and also exploratory. This was participated by all the students after they already finished the course, and that, of course, we were able to seek their informed consent. And so it is composed of closed and open-ended core evaluation questions and open-ended questions looked into the students' participants' lived experience as they were doing the course and also the effect, the evaluation of the effectiveness of the LMS facilitation, the synchronous lecture discussions, as well as the asynchronous lecture, uh, learning activities, materials, and periodic assignments. Two, exa two examples of the open-ended questions include, number one, overall, what I can say with regards the accomplishment of the BA XXX course objectives, given that the class was conducted in a remote learning modality is that, so they had to complete this particular sentence, I mean, this particular requirement. And then the other question, this is just one of the seven others, describe in particular which aspects in the utilization of the periodic guided assignments facilitated your learning in the BA XXX course. So the open-ended responses were then um, coded, I mean, thematically analyzed using the coding thematic analysis framework of Harding and Peel. And so the results are as follows. The first one is the profile of the participants. And then we ask whether the LMS facilitated synchronous learning, almost uh, uh, like 93% of them agreed as well as strongly agreed and that LMS in, is effective in facilitating the preparation of their management research proposal. Then again, about 88 of them um, agreed as, and also strongly agreed. 
and that technology-mediated synchronous lectures facilitated the contents of the BA XXX course. Then again, 100% of them agreed and strongly agreed. So finally, you also have the LMS facilitated interaction with the professor, albeit asynchronously. Yes, again, 100% agreed and strongly agreed to this particular statement. And so we also have the periodic guided assignments or the exemplars facilitated the learning in the BAXXX course. So you see here that once again, 100% agreed as well as strongly agreed to this statement and that the periodic guided assignments facilitated the preparation of the course requirement, which is the research proposal. Once again, 100% agreed and strongly agreed to this particular statement. And so this is now the thematic result analysis of the first question. Overall, what I can say with regards to the accomplishment of the BA 299 course objectives, given that the class was conducted in the remote learning modality. So here you'd see that um, it is encouraging, particularly to the professors, to learn that the students actually would attribute the learning and that would have said that, in fact, all for example, as in statement one, objectives set for the course were accomplished and that the students were able to complete, present, and defend their management research proposal. Once again, in the interest of time, I could not go in detail. And in the process of looking at the thematic responses, I was able to once again take a look at the reference of P. Oak's work. In this case, you have table 6a. This are the social presence instructional strategies that are found from among the seven open-ended questions. So you have here, for example, active learning, which is one of the seven principles, followed by cooperation among students and so on. What is in parentheses, active lear learning, AL equals two, means that I have found two. However, because of the interest of space and time, I also had to on put only one. An example of active learning is that requires students to incorporate materials from the discussions in their assignments. And so in the same manner, we also have the instructional strategies implemented with a community of inquiry teaching presence. So for example, you have active learning, AL is equal to four. There were four instances of this, only one is presented. Provide a detailed course schedule, including the dates for all the assignments. Finally, this is the COI, Cognitive Presence Instructional Strategies Implemented. For the active learning, there were four, and that one of which is develop general learning modules with opportunities for active learning, assessment, and feedback that can be shared among courses and or access by students for remediation and enrichment. And this next table shows the result of mapping out the COI presences of social teaching as well as cognitive presences for each of the thematic answers of the students. Table seven, describe in particular which aspects in the utilization of the periodic guided assignments facilitated in your learning. For this particular answer or for this particular um, question, there are actually 10 thematic responses. And so this is to illustrate how the different instructional activities identified by FIOC are matched for each of these encouraging responses. And there you go. So the results of the evaluation found in Table 5 shows it, that the course objectives were achieved and that the students appreciated and attributed the learning based on the course design as well as the instructional strategies. The management research course instructors may consider the implementation of a synchronous design of the guided periodic assignments as well as the synchronous lecture discussions which actually facilitate the interactions between the students and the professor as well as amongst themselves. The results of the mapping analysis would show that the implemented online instructions, instructional strategies correspond with a number of those that are found in FIOC's 2020 summary. This suggests that the COI framework of the instructional strategies actually have an impact 
on the students learning in the remote learning mode. And so we can actually conclude the applicability of, and the value of FIOC's 2020 Summary of Instructional Strategies. The finding of this study support the proposition of FIOC when he said that offering a design document like what he did to guide practitioners on uninstructional activities that best align with a community of inquiry framework, as well as the seven principles for best practices for the online environment. And so this study ends with a recommendation that educators consider and be guided by the summary of instructional strategies in the preparation of instructional design, as well as online education. Future similar studies may also consider expanding the sample size to test for generalizability. And that ends the presentation. Thank you very much for your time. And I also would like to express my appreciation to the respondents, my students, UP Cebu MBA management research students for the first trimester school year 2020-2021 who understood the purpose of the study and who wholeheartedly participated in the survey. And so these are the references used for this particular study. And Sabuano, we say Dagang Salamat. Thank you very much for your time.